It is my really great pleasure to present our update on my research project. So this is my second year of funding period. And then like last year, so I presented uh, how mucociliary clearance regulated is regulated in the small airway, especially. And then IL-1 pathway uh, is actually uh, partially activating uh, CFTR function at baseline. And then this year, so I'd like to present some updates, uh, more genetic uh, side of how mucociliary clearance associated factors in epithelium is uh, regulated in the small airways. Firstly, I'd like to talk about how, why we are interested in small airway epithelial mucociliary clearance studies. And then uh, next, uh, I'd like to show some data showing what actually makes small airways different from large airways in humans. And then finally, how what's the consequence of uh, loss of identity of small airways in airway epithelium uh, in the context of mucoobstructive lung disease, including CF? The first three, uh, I'd like to quickly show uh, the human lung structures. So airway is branched and the branch the branch 23 times to connect to alveoli. And then uh, traditional uh, definition, the like airway is divided into large and small airways. So yeah, the traditional cutoff uh, that define large and small airways that airways with diameter at two millimeter, this right figure shows like surface area from large trachea to small airways. And then the number and the surface area of small airways is exponentially uh, great uh, compared to large airways. Uh, when we calculate total surface area of uh, large to small airways. The small airway uh, constitute a, really a lot of surface area in the lung. And then when I calculate uh, the actual proportion of surface area in the lung, uh, actually 98% of airway constitutes small airway. So that suggests that like, it's very important to understand uh, how mucociliary clearance is regulated in the small airway regions. And indeed, uh, small airway is affected in uh, mucoobstructive lung disease, uh, including CF, asthma, COPD, and then also IPF. The CF is characterized by mucus obstruction, uh, particularly in small airways, and then asthma, uh, like mucin component is totally changed from MAC5B, which is maintaining mucin, to MAC5B, which is more uh, stickier mucin. And then in COPD, uh, clinical like disease severity or gold stage and the mucus obstruction is well correlated. And then in IPF, uh, mucin overproduction and accumulation in the small area region is a, a problem in the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis. So these data suggest that like, small area regions are vulnerable to mucus obstruction. And now uh, our question is uh, why small area regions are vulnerable? So what's the behind of this? Uh, vulnerability. And one uh, old paper, so this is published in 50 years ago, uh, tried to measure mucociliary clearance in different regions of airways. And then the point of this paper is here. So from proximal to distal airways, mucociliary clearance is getting slower, uh, like as shown here. Like in trachea, it, the, this tantalum, Tantalum, so th that's a chemical. It's cleared at 20 hours, uh, but in the distal areas, it takes like even like 20 days to clear uh, these chemicals. And then if there is a disease like bronchitis, this uh, tantalum, tantalum is remained uh, even after uh, 20 days. So the, this disease affects small area mucociliary clearance. And then, uh, Gathering other evidence, uh, MCC seemed to be slower in small airways. And also other reports said, showed mucus is less concentrated and less viscoelastic in canine small airways compared to large airways. But th that question is like, why mucus in small airways might be diluted and then slowly transported? And this is a working hypothesis, but the potential benefit for this mechanism uh, specific to small airway might be avoid enough flooding in airways because if we think about mucus, mucus transport from distal to proximal, 
Now, uh, surface area is really exponentially decreased to the central airway. So then uh, that airway has to account for that the exponential decrease of surface area. So then slower and then less concentrated mucus uh, and slower mucosal transport and then less concentrated mucus might be helpful to do this. But the, if that, this is the case, the potential cost could be diluted mucus layer uh, cause weaker barrier function. And also, solar clearance rate uh, might cause longer exposure time to inhale toxicants in pathogens. So those could be potential um, re reason for smaller vulnerability. Also, there is lack of submucosal glands uh, in the smaller region that might be also contributing to vulnerability. Because Dr. Nam Sun Jun's uh, presentation today shows submucosal glands are very critical. Uh, in the especially large airway trachea uh, mucosal clearance, but small areas lack that structures. And then these all <laughs> mucosal clearance is regulated by epithelial cells. And then recently, uh, epithelial cell populations are, are reported to be different between large and small areas. And in small areas, especially secreted cell population that's uniquely present in small areas have a bipotent progenitor function that can be differentiated into airway and also uh, alveolar cells, depending on the situation. And it's one, two of uh, famous markers for small airways that were identified in these papers are surfactant protein B and sgb 3 2 So these markers are only expressed in the small airways, but not in the larger airways. So this like, difference in airway epithelial cell population might make sense if mucociliary clearance mechanism is also different between large and small. So then, uh, to, but the small area is really uh, distal from the mouth and it's really hard to test functional analysis uh, in vivo setting. And we have developed uh, in vitro system uh, to test uh, functional uh, part of small area cell small area epithelial cells. Uh, so we initially we start micro dissection uh, to get the small area epithelial cells. Like here to get the like areas less than two millimeter uh, under microscope. But the, this is, works for normal lung, normal lungs. But in CF lung or other disease lung, uh, Airway is really inflamed and then uh, adhesive to other like fibroblast or mesenchymal structures. And it's really hard to micro dissect airways from uh, the disease run. But we like to uh, use small airway cells from CF or other disease run as well. And then we develop uh, bulk enzymatic chemical digestion. So we uh, just cut a very peripheral piece of the lung and then chemically digest this piece. And then we literally see what we get after chemical digestion, after filtering. But, uh, and then uh, our media actually select epithelial cells to be expanded. So then uh, we characterize small airway cells uh, obtained from micro dissection and then bulk enzymatic chemical digestion. And then they show really similar phenotype. So, and then now we have established the protocol to get the small airway cells from not only normal, but also any lung disease. And then an uh, interesting feature is this small airway cell culture express SFTPB, SGB3, so which are uh, unique markers in small airways identified in in vivo human lung. And our in vitro model really nicely mimic uh, in vivo large small difference. So, and then now we have established uh, this large and small cell cultures. So <laughs> we use this model for a lot of things, including single cell RNA attacks against characterization, and then taking advantage of in vitro system. Uh, we measure CFTR function in these cultures and also like gene overexpression like CRISPR-Cas9 uh, gene editing. So uh, I'm going to introduce some of the data from here. But firstly, uh, what actually is different between large and small at the gene level? And we performed bulk RNA sequence. Uh, bulk RNA sequence really characterized whole uh, culture information, not cell type specific. 
And then these are small airway and rich genes, and then large airway and rich genes. And if we look at, uh, firstly, uh, when we look at substance protein B, that, that's really uh, enriched in small airways uh, in single cell RNA sequence. So we identified substance protein B is uh, exclusively expressed in the smaller cell cultures and then enriched in secretory cell population here. So this is a UMAP of our large and small cell cultures. And then this surfactant protein B is enriched in secretory cells. And then in contrast, when we look at large area enriched genes, so this is a representative gene. So keratin 14 is expressed in large area cultures and then enriched in the basal cells. If we look at more globally, uh, large or small area enriched genes, so these are red bar genes, uh, large area enriched genes identified by bulk RNA sequence. So these genes are enriched in actually basal cell population. In contrast, these small marker genes identified by bulk information, bulk RNA sequence is really uh, consistently enriched in the secretory cells. So these data suggest large airway uh, characteristics is uh, based on the basal cell population. In contrast, Small airway identity or characteristics is represented by secretory cells. That's a, uh, one finding. Uh, <laughs> and then th that data is uh, supported by this proteomics analysis uh, from apical secretion from large and small cell cultures. So these uh, proteins are enriched in large airway uh, cultures, and then these uh, proteins are enriched in small airway apical cell culture derived uh, apical washes. So you can see uh, more uh, significantly enriched proteins from small airway cells that might support the uh, notion that secretory cell is uh, the characteristic of small cell cultures versus basal cells. So secretory cell produce a lot of secretory proteins. So that's why uh, we could identify uh, more proteins in the apical wash uh, that is specific to small areas. So these are just like representative uh, data for large enriched protein, and then these are small airways. So then now the internal summary. So uh, distinctive secretory cell population specifies small airway cell, uh, small airway epithelial identity that is distinguishable from large airway cultures. And our small airway cell cultures in vitro contain the small airway unique secretory cells. So then the next question is, what well, actually regulate the small airway unique secretary cell, which can define small airway identity. So, and then we utilize the single nucleus RNA and the ADAC sequence. So uh, let me briefly uh, introduce this technique. So for genes to be transcribed and then uh, translated to the protein to be functional. So the first uh, important step is binding a trans that transcription factor binds the gene. To do that, so the chromatin region of this uh, gene close to gene level should be open and available for transcription factor binding. So, uh, and then uh, once transcription factor binds here, open chromatin region, so then uh, transcription can start. So in that case, uh, the if we can see uh, which chromatin region is accessible and open. So then uh, we can uh, predict uh, how that cell or like cultures are regulated at the transcriptional level. And then the single nucleus at ADAC sequence is uh, really the advantage of this single nucleus uh, assay is we can see open chromatin region information at single cell level. So for example, this cartoon shows uh, that the chromatin with transcription factor. So the chromatin is open here and then transcription factor is binding here. So, and then the, this assay actually cut uh, this open chromatin region and then uh, identify the sequence of this open region and then uh, show uh, that the, where the chromatin is open as a peak plot, like here, so at cell level. So in this cartoon, for example, cell type X has peak here and here. So 
but cell type Y has only peak here. So that means this uh, region is open uh, only in the, this cell type X. So, and then we can also predict what transcription factor can bind this region based on the literature. <clears throat> and then firstly, uh, I'd like to show like a very general view of this ADAC sequence. So this is uh, all chromatin regions and then uh, open chromatin like intensity here. So then firstly, uh, if you look at this basal cell, cycling cell is a proliferating basal cells. So you see uh, a lot of uh, chromatin region is open here. And then once they become uh, secretary cells, so these chromatin open region is all shut down. And then now secretary cell specific chromatin region become open and available. And then once uh, the cells become ciliated cells, and then uh, these regions are shut down, and then another uh, ciliated cell unique chromatin region is now open. So this data suggests like this chromatin open the crows are really tightly regulated uh, by cell specific uh, level. And then this is a data from our cultures. So we culture large and small A cells uh, obtained from the same match donors and then differentiated and then run single RNA sequence and ADAC ADA sequence. So, and then this is a UMAP. So our culture has major and minor airway epithelial cells, including ciliated, secretory, uh, and basal cell ionocyte. And then uh, nicely, uh, our data has a subset of secretary cells that it, that comprises 90% uh, of small airway culture cells, and then with uh, only 10% of large airway cells. <laughs> and if we look at the small airway cell markers, so this number nine secretory cluster uh, express uh, uniquely uh, these small airway cell markers. So that means uh, this population, not so many, but this population is, uh, we identify this population as a small air unique secretary cells. That determines small air identity. <clears throat> and then now we look at uh, the ATAC sequence data. So, and this heat map uh, is derived from, based on the open chromatin regions, which gene is actually uh, activated. So, and then you see here, like there is a specific gene set uh, that shows like a high intensity. So that means in this number nine secretary cluster, um, express uh, these genes, like these genes are, I mean, activated in this number nine secretary cells uh, more compared to other cell types. And then when we look at uh, one gene like SFTPV here, so this is a not already known small A markers. So there is a higher peak in the small A cell cultures compared to large A cultures. But this is uh, from bulk information. And then, we look at more details at the cell type, cell type level. So then uh, from bulk information, we can know only like higher peak in small airway compared to large airways. But if we look at carefully uh, cell type, there is actually a unique peak in here that's not identified in this like bulk kind of peak data, but that's uh, unique and then more correlated with uh, gene expression. So that's uh, in the number nine secret cells. So this is really uh, suggesting really this technique at single cell level is a powerful tool to identify the regulatory elements in the cell type specifically. And then uh, consistent with this ADAC data. So when we look at gene expression, SFTPB is uh, exclusively high in this number nine secret cells. So these data all together uh, show really nice, consistent uh, kind of information from open chromatin region to gene expression. And then now we look at like what transcription factor is different between large and small. So these are uh, small airway enriched transcription factors, and then these are large airway trans enriched transcription factors. So small airway enriched transcription factors include GATA families and then NKX families, that is known. <laughs> These transcription factors are known to be very important for alveolar specification during the lung development. 
And then uh, we further look at top 50 transcription factors and which the small airway secretory cells, which is a number nine secretory clusters. And then uh, interestingly, uh, some most of the uh, enriched transcription factors in small airway secretory cells are also highly enriched in other secretory cell populations, but no ciliated cells. And then we look at what transcription factor is relatively specific to this population because we like to know specific regulatory uh, elements that regulate this small airway secretory cells. So then uh, we found here, so actually NKX 2.1, 2.2, 4. So these NKX2.2, NKX family is relatively specific to this small airway secretory cell population. And the NKX2.1 is known uh, uh, transcription factor that is important for specification of the lung uh, during the development and also important for specification of alveolar type 2 cells. And when we look at uh, which cell type express NKX2.1 in the normal human lungs, so this is a kind of positive control. So NKX2.1 is highly expressed in the SFTPB, surfactant protein B positive cells, but it not like, positive for SGB3A2. So that means these are alveolar type 2 cells. And then uh, when we look at uh, small airways here, so NKX2.1 is also expressed in these cells that express also surfactant protein B and CB3A2. So that means these small airway unique secretory cells express high level of NKX2.1, just like alveolar cells. <laughs> so that's consistent with our culture-based uh, ADAC sequence. And then now uh, we knock out uh, this NKX2.1 in both large and small airway, human airway epithelial cell cultures. And NKX2.1 is actually expressed not only small airways, but large airways. The expression there is a little bit low, weaker than the small airways, but still present. And then we knock out this, this protein. And our knockout efficiency using the electroporation is like more than 95% and pretty good. So, <laughs> and then this is a, uh, morphology of knockout cultures and the control. So you see uh, more uh, large uh, mucin granule containing morphologically looking uh, gobless cells in the knockout cultures. And then more generally looking at uh, what, uh, what happens in this NKX 2.1 KO cultures in large and small, we have two different controls like non electro operation and the negative guide RNA CRISPR control. And these are the green one is ciliated cell markers, alpha tubulin, and the MAC5 AC positive cells are red. So these are, uh, and then like SFTPB positive cells are only present in the small air cell cultures as I presented in the previous slide. And then when we look at uh, NKX 2.1, the virtually actually no difference in the large airway cultures. However, uh, when we look at NKX 2.1 in the small air cell cultures, they show a uh, massive increase in the uh, go mac 5 ac positive goblet cells. And our quantification shows that difference. And also, uh, notably, uh, SFTPB positive normal small air secretary cells are significantly decreased in the knockout cultures. And then when we look at more globally, uh, the gene profiles uh, in these cult knockout cultures, the not only mac 5 ac but also other goblet cell markers are uh, increased in the NKX2.1 knockout small airway cell cultures, but this uh, change didn't happen in the large airways. In contrast, uh, small airway secretory cell markers are uh, significantly decreasing small airway knockout cultures, but the, there is some trend, similar trend in large airways, but not really significantly. Because uh, these, these markers, uh, sm the marker of small airway secretory cells, and then that population is not present in the large areas at baseline. So that could be the reason why uh, when we look at NKX 2.1, uh, really a little thing happened in the large area cultures. And then when we look at other cell type markers, the basal cell markers are not changed, uh, serial cell ionocyte markers are not changed either. So these data suggest like NKX 2.1 seem to be really specifically regulate small airway secretory cell identity. So, and then finally, uh, we look at like 
what's the consequence of this loss of small array identity by NKX 2.1 knockout? So firstly, we confirmed at the protein level, uh, MAC5AC uh, is significantly upregulated in the NKX 2.1 knockout small array cell cultures. And MAC5E as well, but that magnitude of increases uh, smaller compared to uh, MAC5AC. And then when we uh, measure percent solids of apical secretion from these cultures, so that percent solids uh, is defined by the proportion, relative proportion of fluid component and the solid component in the apical secretion. And then this percent solid is a known parameter. So that is really correlated well with uh, C mucociliary clearance. And also, uh, in particularly in CF, that disease severity is also correlated with the percent solid. Even very small change uh, alter uh, mucus properties a lot, uh, and then mucociliary clearance as well. So this percent solid is significantly increased uh, in the small area uh, NKX 2.0 knockout cultures. And then, uh, because we know uh, mac 5 ac is up, and mac 5 e is also slightly up, and that makes percent solids in this small area in knockout cultures higher. But if if other like fluid in fluid secretion also goes up, so then percent solids might be preserved the same. But uh, in fact, this percent solids increased. And then we wonder how CFTR mediated fluid secretion is changed or not. And this is a Ushing Chamber study to look at CFTR function here. Actually, there is no difference uh, in CFTR function in knockout cultures uh, in small areas. <laughs> this suggests even uh, when some normal small area secretary cells are transdifferentiated into pathological MAC5AC positive goblet cells, CFTR might be also expressed in the pathological goblet cells. And then the, another uh, interesting finding here is like ENAC function is decreased uh, in knockout cultures in both large and small areas. So that's a common finding in both regions. And if ENAC function is decreased, because ENAC mediates fluid absorption, so then if ENAC function is decreased, so then epithelial cell try to keep fluid on the apical side, because probably that's uh, try to remove uh, accumulate mucus here. But, um, and then if, when we look at the gene expression, uh, beta ENAC and gamma ENAC, so those are critical component of ENAC function. So those are also down regulated in both regions, more significantly in the small airways. But in fact, this uh, percent solids is all like uh, cover all this information. Uh, that means uh, even uh, if amyloid response like ENAC function is decreased and then try to keep the fluid on the apical surface. However, uh, mucin overproduction overcome that uh, compensation mechanism and then raise uh, percent solid. And then this, is, this, this really suggests they could disturb mucociliary clearance mechanism in the small airways. But also, uh, if, I, if we imagine uh, this happens in the CF, so the CFTR function is actually uh, zero, uh, close to zero in the CF epithelial cell cultures. In that case, this the increase in percent solids should be really significant. So that suggests like this loss of uh, small area identity, uh, at least partially regulated by NKX 2.1, is really important mechanism for uh, the failure of mucociliary clearance in the mucoobstructive lung disease. And lastly, uh, when we look at uh, actual human disease lung tissues, so this is the asthma. Uh, in normal lungs, uh, NKX 2.0 is highly expressed in the small airways, and the mac 5 ac is usually almost absent in the small air region. But in fatal asthma sections, mac 5 ac is really highly dominating this uh, small air epithelial cells, and then NKX 2.0 is completely lost. So this is really mimicking, actually in vitro small air cell and KX2.1 culture, it really mimic this uh, phenotype. And also when we look at CF, so we did like spatial trans transcriptome analysis. So to compare uh, the gene expression between large uh, small areas between normal and the CF. 
So we see increase in Mach 5 AC, Mach 5 B. So these are mucins, and then decrease in SGB3 to SFTPB. So this suggests that in CF, uh, this small airway epithelial cell um, identity is lost. Uh, in contrast, uh, mucin uh, expression is up. So that suggests uh, the percent solids of small air mucus increase and then disturb mucociliary clearance. So summarizing this data, so human in vitro small ray cell culture is a useful model to study small airway specific epithelial biology and physiology and disease pathogenesis. And small ray secretary cells are key cell type that determine the regional identity of small airway epithelia. And then NKX 2.1 as it partially regulates the identity of small airway secretary cells. That means like small air itself. And the loss of small area identity results in mucus hyperconcentration and likely mucociliary clearance failure in the small area region in moles, including CF. Yeah, uh, finally, uh, thanks so much for uh, all collaborators and my lab, mem lab members uh, to make uh, this uh, data. And then, so, and also, uh, I'd like to really thank you. Uh, thank for uh, the CFRI for really continuing support for my research. Uh, I started uh, like nine years ago, uh, like CF research and then CFRI uh, funded when I postdoc. So, and then uh, I really still continue doing this large and small area mucociliary clearance research, uh, thanks to CFRI. Thanks so much for your attention.